Hello, it's been a while I didn't have a repair video and today on my bench I have this Shure SLX4 wireless microphone receiver which wouldn't power up. Let's have a look. First uh, let's see if this is because of the power supply or because of the receiver. And there are two approaches we can use. First is to test the power supply and second is to test the receiver with some other power supply. Let's explore the first approach. First of all, let's make sure that we have a matching power supply. Let's look at this marking on the back of the receiver next to the power connector and it reads 12 to 18 volts, 160 milliamps and a little diagram with the center pin positive. The power supply we have is 12 volts, 400 milliamps and positive center pin. Looks fine so far. I found the connector which fits. Of course we could just stick probes into this connector but this way is more convenient. Let's try. 17.6 volts. Uh, clearly this power supply is not regulated uh, which is okay and uh, up to 18 volts is fine for the receiver but of course this is not a sufficient test uh, because we don't know what happens under load. The best way to test under load is to use an instrument like this electronic load but a simpler method can be used as well just a power resistor like this uh, this is 100 ohm uh, 10 watt resistor at 18 volts it would draw 180 milliamps and dissipate slightly more than 3 watts but electronic load is certainly more convenient we can set any current we want so let's start with 100 milliamps the voltage dropped a bit to 15.7 or 8 uh, because it's not a regulated supply there is some ripple which is okay uh, let's go higher 200 300 and 400 and this is the maximum specified on the power supply and we have uh, around 12 volts uh, this looks fine to me. Uh, for completeness we could uh, look at the ripple with the scope but I don't think this is necessary at this point. Uh, let's start testing the receiver. We could use its own power supply and now we are reasonably sure that supply is doing fine but I still believe it is better to use some other supply to be completely certain there is no problem there and the best way is to use a lab supply so we can set any voltage any current limit we want and easily see the current flowing to the device under test and also have the safety of the current limit uh, to avoid or minimize chances of blowing something up if there is a short or something like that so I keep a collection of all sorts of wires and connectors for such purposes and I found this little piece of wire with the connector which fits this receiver. Let's go! And I suggest to double check the polarity. In our case the center pin must be positive. I set 200 milliamps limit Let's try powering this up. I believe this is a soft button and absolutely nothing is happening. No current draw at all. Here I took the cover off and I really like the look inside of this receiver. Seems like a high quality board. And I see a problem. Something is burnt right there, next to the power connector. 
let me zoom in. Here it is. I think this is the best zoom I can get out of my camera. Hopefully you can see the damage. Let me take the board out of the case so we can have a better view. Here is the board. Thing of beauty. And here is our problem. Something went really wrong there. I cleaned the damaged area with alcohol so we can see better. And now I see that these two parts are blown and they seem to be tiny inductors. And I probed around a little bit and I think I'm beginning to understand what's going on here. Let's have a look. We have continuity mode. So, it seems to me that the negative terminal from this uh, power connector, which is on this side, does not go to the ground directly, but instead there is a trace under that connector, and here it is. And it was supposed to be connected to this side of the inductor, but this terminal of the inductor is blown away, and the trace is blown as well, and it was supposed to be connected to that inductor. But because the trace is blown right here, there is no connection anymore. And this inductor is blown as well. Here I traced this part of the circuit to better understand what's going on. This is the negative terminal of the power supply connector. Uh, it should be connected through these two inductors to the ground. We have the same thing on the positive side. The positive terminal is connected through two inductors to this point. And I believe these are identical inductors. These two are on the positive side and they look fine. Then we have this capacitor, a tiny ceramic cap right here. This is a Schottky diode for reverse polarity protection. Then we have some filtering, this ceramic cap and this electrolytic cap. Then we have this voltage regulator producing one power rail. And off of that rail we have another regulator, this guy. And I believe it should produce a 5 volt rail. And we have more filtering before and after. So, this rail must be somewhere between 5 volts and uh, the minimum input, which is 12 volts. So, perhaps 9 volt rail or something like that. And we have these two inductors blown together with this trace. What might have happened, I really don't know. Perhaps some sort of a surge between the negative terminal and the ground, which is the chassis of the unit. What I think we can do is just bypass this with a little piece of wire before we start worrying about the replacement inductors and carefully test that using the current limited lab supply. Here I bypassed the blown inductors with this little piece of wire. Let's try powering this on. We see 107 milliamps current draw. Let's check the power rails. This goes to the ground. And this should be the first rail, 9 volts. And the second rail, 5 volts. Perfect. I put the board into the case for now to test with the front panel connected. 
and we see the same 107 or about 108 milliamps in standby let's try powering this up oh there you go it is working and we see 131 milliamps let's try powering this down again and we are back to 107 which seems a little high but I don't think it means any problem and it is just about 1.2 watts or so not a big deal at all just looks a little wasteful for standby here I have this transmitter let's power it up there you go we have our reception even with no antennas attached and we have audio now let's see how can we fix this properly first of all I need to remove the blown inductors I removed the blown inductors, cleaned the pads and tinned this trace and hopefully you can see that the trace is interrupted here and the pad is gone so I will need to do some careful repair here when I solder a new inductor now let's measure the good inductors to see what replacement we need one point eight micro Henry and this is two inductors in parallel so each one should be twice this value here I found a couple of inductors which are about the same size as the original ones and about the right value here is the result the broken trace was repaired with a small piece of thin gauge 30 wire like this and that piece of wire on the back was removed of course the receiver is back together and seems to be fully working if you like this sort of stuff subscribe to the channel and as always thank you for watching bye